you tormented souls. <laughs>
and the dragon became white in color. And Vermaon had created a counterpart for Nova King called Nocturne. She slumbers as well, like a massive statue on top of Mountain King Island, to awaken when Nova King does. Well, that must mean that there's hope if Nova King never should come. Yes, but people fear it is not enough, boy. It's not enough. No. But why? Because of Ignitus. Ignitus found out what Vermon had done. And he took an anthropomorphic form and found Vermon. He grabbed him by the neck and upper body so tightly you can hear the cracking of his scales. And he said to him, you have betrayed me. You have prayed to another god and made a dragon of your own. Do you think what you have done will have any impact on Vernaruk whatsoever? It will be a drop of sweat trying to stop a volcano of molten lava. You have done nothing with this blasphemy but condemn your own soul to the fires of my domain. And you will spend an eternity in torture, Vernaon. So be it. But I will honor the pact I made in your name for the other dragonborns under you. I should have slaughtered you all. But I will show them mercy. For I am still their god, and they are my first creation. But as for you, betrayer, die! And the wrath of Ignitus was so severe that it burned a hundred feet of ground to a crisp. Poor Vermon. Where did this happen, Grandfather? The land is called Judgment Grounds. It is found in Sugut Island. The fire burns so severely that the entire ground has turned into hard stone. It is said that you can even see the skeleton remains of Vermont there, among the stones, lying like an eternal reminder to never cross the gods, especially Ignitus. That's... T that's severe. It is, son. It is. Whoa, do not piss off the gods. <laughs> Welcome back guys, so this was another stop at Camp Lore. Hope the way you like that I do this segue with Camp Lore, I think it's very smart to have a little bit of insight into the world of Ariana, bit by bit. And of course there's a limited of stuff that I have written down in lore, but I'll try to get a little bit in every episode. Some of them are going to be shorter, some of them are going to be longer and more detailed. But I hope you like it, but now we're going to continue the main story. In episode 1 and 2 we finished our first flashback. In last episode, episode 3, we followed Swovan a bit on his quest as he left Ronan to find himself. Now we're gonna follow Hadurai, or more like we're gonna follow Hadurai's friends. Hadurai has come a long way since Ronan himself. After Ronan, he went to Angel's Bliss to meet the king. King Vash sent Hadurai and Victor on missions around Morrow. And at one point, they departed from Victor, and they do not know what happened to him. Hadurai met new friends on his journey. He met Hunter, the tiefling warlock, and Kedal, a human druid. All three of them made missions for King Vash. And at one point, things changed. They saw the cruelty of King Vash and the way he treated halfling slaves in Angel's Bliss. Angel's Bliss has had slaves of halflings now for hundreds of years. Actually, the entire island of Morrow has. Now, when the heroes were at the king's court, 
a dwarf messenger came warning King Vash to stop the treatment of the slaves and to free them. But King Vash just laughed at this notion. The human empire will not change their ways from what they have done now for hundreds of years just because a dwarf wants them to. Not even by the threatening of war. So now there is war between the dwarves of the north and the human empire. When the messenger said this to Vash, he was captured and beaten severely. Our heroes witnessed this and lost all respect for the king. They continued to see the cruel treatment of halflings, and this changed them. They wanted to do something about this as well, and made an enemy of the king. Now they're on the run. The kingdom of Moro is in three parts. The main part is in the east, where the largest part of the kingdom is. Angel's Bliss is there. Most of the armies are all there. Then you have Midmorrow. Midmorrow is called the Barren Lands. It is fenced in because there's so much monsters and evil there that it cannot be contained or controlled. Then you come to Westmorrow. Westmorrow is not so much controlled by the king as of yet, but he gathers a lot of resources from there. Our heroes have fled all the way over to Westmorrow from the king. It is here Kedal is from. They have found a place called Bliss, a safe haven. It is here Kedal is from. Kedal knew if they were to reach Bliss, they could find some help from the chieftain there called Tawagrim. Tawagrim also hates the slaving of halflings. He hates the enslaving of anything and wants freedom for all. So they were very optimistic to come there asking for help. But they were a bit disappointed. Tawgrim fears for the inhabitants of Bliss. They have survived for so long, unnoticed and in cover and hiding over in Westmorrow. He fears that if they try to make a lot of trouble for King Vash, too much attention will come over to them and ruin everything. It's too high a price. But. He still wants to help the halflings. He said to the heroes, I have to sleep on it. And they agreed to talk again the day after. It is here we're gonna continue to follow our heroes. The next morning a man comes in and says, Taugrim has called for you to his tent. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sure. I'm probably lying around, uh, just with my bare feet up on the edge of the bed, um, eating some fruits or something like that. Are we in the same room? You're in the same room. Is Hatterai here? No. No. Do we know where he is? Uh, he's nowhere to be seen in that room. Huh. Um, we were all supposed to sleep in here together and yeah. then talk to Targum the next day. Yeah, well you look up on his bed and his bed is empty. Yeah. So, okay. well, let's, uh, should we go talk to Taugrim? I'd rather uh, search for how, how do I? <laughs> but, uh, but maybe he kn he's seen him. Okay, let's talk to Taugrim. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So you both go together? Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, we're going to meet Taugrim. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Taugrim is the, uh, in his, his hut um, and uh, tells you guys... Uh, Come in, men. There's something wrong with your friend Hadurai. He was found by the river, passed out. He looks very ill. He's not responding and won't wake up. Um, then he takes you to a, a, a hut which is very excluded. It looks like it's put... Uh, sick people are always put there so they don't infect anybody mm. close by. Um, they're keeping a, a very close watch on him. It doesn't look like it's uh, something contagious. So you, you can come in. Uh, and he takes the rag off and when you come inside you can see how is lying there and he looks very pale. And you can see uh, his veins are very uh, visible. You can see it very much. And he just looks uh, exhausted and he, there's no uh, contact with him at all. Uh, uh, Tarkin, do you know what, uh, what, what's wrong with him? Is it a disease or...? I hope you would tell us that. We found nothing. Nothing wrong with his body. No cuts or wounds. But he looks drained of energy. But it doesn't seem like a disease. 
I touch Hadarai and cast Lesser Restoration. Since it's not a disease, the effect uh, doesn't work. Well, Dude. I don't know what's wrong with him. No. Have you been anywhere that you can recall that might have caused this? And are you feeling okay? Well, I mean, well, besides the whole, you know, being cursed thing, I'm pretty good. <laughs> well, compared to you, Hadarai looks really bad. Compared yeah, it doesn't look like a curse, right? No. Um, I mean, I don't know, maybe, maybe that acid thing. That uh, guy that sprayed acid everywhere got, like, maybe it was poisonous. So. But didn't that hit us as well? You know, did it only hit Harai? I think it only hit Harai, right? It might be. It might be that, yeah. Well, I don't know, or any of that undead stuff. Do you have any antitoxins nearby? We have, yes. It's already been given to him, but with no effect. Okay. It might be something magical in nature. We have called for a hermit wizard to come and help. But it'll take a couple of days. Yeah. I don't really know what we can, uh, what we can, we can accomplish. My uh, my powers are currently not strong enough to uh, no. to 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 uh, be any any help for him. So be well, of any help. So what I can do is at least detect magic. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna cast detect magic. When you cast detect magic, um, you sense that. Uh, from a very specific area on him, there's uh, a necromantic magic. Oh, from where? From his uh, pocket. Do you know his pocket? Uh, well, I'll, I'll relay that information to uh, to Kettle and, uh, and talk to him. Um, I think there's something in his pocket that might be affecting him. I'm sensing a strong magical essence. I'll try to look in his pocket without touching the essence. When you lift off the cloth, you can see a green crystal inside. Glowing. You've seen this crystal before. Okay, I cast the spell uh, magic on the crystal. Somehow the the magic you're casting isn't powerful enough to dispel it. I just leveled up, so I use mage hand. Yeah. <coughs> to grab the crystal and get it away from, like not to myself, but just like you know, as far away from okay. all of us as possible. As soon as like the crystal goes from him, you like hear a gasp <sighs> from him, and he starts breathing again very slowly. Then he just passes out. Um, where you put the rock? Um, I don't know. I talk, 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 do you have any way I can put this like obviously really horrible thing? Do you have like a? I, I mean, know, he takes a cloth. Box? Yeah, he takes a, he takes a cloth um, and just wood box. Doesn't have anything else. Put some jewelry outside and puts the cloth in and just holds holds it up to your mage hand. Put it in here. So okay, so I'll drop it in. And locks it. Closes it. What is this thing? Uh, I don't know. It's. I mean, obviously, it's. Uh, it's not anything good. Um, <coughs> as, as I said, uh, I sent something uh, necrotic from it. So I don't know. Did Did he used to have this crystal? I. Uh, I can only remember that he held it at some point, but um, I saw no significance in him having it at that point because. Okay. Can you roll? Um Intelligence check history. Yeah. Uh, 16. 16, okay. You have heard him talk about this crystal, explaining that he got this crystal when he was in Hollow Stitch, um, trying to get inside, and it's a soul crystal. It contains souls. Um, and you've also heard about that he this crystal is needed to open a book called The Nocturnal Cree, which King Vash told you about that, that you were on a mission, supposedly before all this, to go get in a graveyard village. And he's been keeping this uh, crystal on him all the time. It's been not been very active, but last time you saw it active, it was on the boat, where this giant spider draws souls out of the crystal and draw life energy out of Hadarai and gave life to a sea monster. Right. You saw the rays flying in the air and going into the ocean. That gave life actually to the sea monster. I can discern all that. That's just history. You just yeah, remember. You've, you've seen it. You've been there all the time. You've heard him say it. You've been there, seen that. Okay. Yeah. Well, I so what else has happened with the crystal since with Hadrian specifically? You don't know. Okay. What is it? It might be some some sort of soul container, or mm. 
or catalyst of souls. But I don't know. Uh, I don't know how it functions at all. No. I saw it in a quick flicker of a moment when we uh, sailed, when we were on board. But um, I don't know. I don't know what it does. Do you know why he has it? Uh, no. I'm not quite sure. But maybe we should. I mean, it seemed like it helped how to ride to to get away from it. So maybe we should let him recuperate and uh, yeah. he can tell us. What do I do with it? I'll have it buried in the ground. I fear the magic that contains it. No, well, then do that. Just remember where it is. Maybe he needs it for something. Anyway, meet me in my tent. There's something I need to share with you. All right. Do you follow? Yeah. Yeah. So Hutterai and Hunter followed Thorogrim into his tent, where he had something on his mind. I've been up all night thinking about what we were discussing last night. I know that I said no to what you proposed to me, for I fear the safety of my people. But I fear you're right. It's just a matter of time before King Vash will find us. And Bliss will not be a safe haven anymore. The armies of the Empire of Vash are few over here in Westmorrow. And like you said, if we do nothing, it's just a matter of time before Vash sends more of his armies to this side of the kingdom. Mm -hmm. So I have changed my mind. Like you know, Katal, we've tried to free the halflings for a long time, but diplomacy has failed. We will join the Freeling Rebellion. The dwarves want the halflings to be free as well, and are at war with Vash. Can you reach him? We can. Strong jaw? Well, maybe not him, but some dwarf. There's definitely somebody close to him. Or some of his generals. Yeah. We will use their war to our advantage. As long as the dwarves attack East Morrow, Vash will have little focus on us over here in the west. But, but sh shouldn't, shouldn't we wait until we have drawn Vash out? Because we... We can use guerrilla tactics over here to yes. to uh, destabilize his hold on Westmorrow. Mm -hmm. And then while we do that, he's forced to send troops over here or else he'll lose resources. It'll weaken uh, sure. Angel's Bliss. Yeah. And when it weakens Angel's Bliss, we can have strong jaw attack. Yeah, and I think the thing is, as it is right now, he's not that strong on this side of the island. Uh, so it's a good time to attack before yes. it's more true. And true. we don't have to overtake any fortresses or cities nope. now. We just have to annoy him enough exactly. that he put sense troop this way and that leaves the area open for Stronger yeah. to attack on the other side, making him have to either split his troop or focus on one area. Yeah, maybe. And if he comes here, that leaves Angel Bliss open. Yeah, or at least it, it leaves it a little more weakened. weakened yeah. But as for over here, there are two ways to come on shore in Westmorrow. We have Camp Thran in the north and Skyer in the south. Um, and he, he has a map on the floor pointing to uh, the north side of the map. Mm -hmm. uh, the other one is in uh, the south. Skyer is the larger of the two harbors. Camp Thran is where Vash sends soldiers to man the towers on the giant wall, guarding the barren lands of Midmorrow. And halfling slaves are also shipped from there. They're gathered from Green Rock Village. Skyer is where Vash sends ships to gather resources to ship back to Angel's Bliss. Then we have Morrow Town West. Over here in the southeast side is the largest village, and there Vash has his armies that police West Morrow. Take it over, and we own Westmorrow. And to our advantage, the soldiers sent there are often young and not that experienced. They rely religiously on their general, 
And without him, they're like headless chickens. But no are, are we strong? I mean, if you say that's the biggest town right now, are we strong enough to take that town? That'll be the hard part, for he's well guarded. The last report was that they were 20 soldiers. 20 soldiers, yeah. yeah. I mean, then the two of us definitely won't be... No, not in a frontal attack, where they see you no. coming. You'll need to get the general and take him out silently. With him gone, the young soldiers won't know what to do, and the people of the village will rebel. Mm. And they are weary, mistreated by the general and his men. So, we're talking assassination mission here. <clears throat> Last time we spoke, you were um, really trying to advocate for us to go to the crypt of Christo. Targrim then took a parchment with a drawing of a portal on it, and he pointed to a defect crystal on it and said, Thing won't seem to work. We're working on to see if we can have it restored. We still plan to get the gold from the crypt of Christo the Vile, but it'll have to wait for yeah. now. Because I don't think right now is not a, we don't need an army. We're not gonna take them head on as an army. No, that won't work. No, we a it would probably be to our benefit to work in the shadows and pick at them. Agree. One way to stick a thorn in Vash's side will be to destroy his harbors, or one of them at least. Then there'll only be one way on shore, and it'll be easier to control. Hmm. And we can stop him collecting resources from Westmorrow. I can see sense in that, so um, you would like us to strike at that fortress? Yes. I think we'll have to do the most damage as quickly as possible. I would recommend kill the general and take the harbors. Yeah, I think the good, the smart thing would be to start with the harbors, because yeah, take the, the fortress, yeah, it would be good to have a fortress, but I think for now it's more in our interest of them not knowing where we are. Mm -hmm. If we take a fortress and have our base they, everybody yeah. knows that's where we are, and he could just send in an army and take us down. Yeah. So maybe take down the axis first. Hunter, Cadal, and Taurgrim spend hours discussing what to do. This is the biggest decision Taurgrim has ever made. A rebellion against the empire of King Vash. They have to be careful. They have to be thorough in the way they plan to do this. And it seems like they have reached an agreement. The best way to keep King Vash far away from Westmorrow is to crush down the harbors, not allowing him to enter by sea. Do you think, have you scouted out the harbor? Will, it, will we be able to overtake that two men? The most recent report from Skyer came this morning and it all seems peaceful. The harbor there has a large main pier, with three smaller piers connecting to the main pier where the ships can dock. There are a lot of fishermen working there. The houses of Skyer are not around the harbor. You have to walk uphill to the inn, north, and right over the hilltop. That's where you'll find the inhabitants of Skyer. Many of the fishermen who are working in Skyer stay at the inn. But how, how should we expect the civilians to be? Are they friendly or are they loyal to Vash? Or like how can we <coughs> expect getting help or can we expect fighting them? Hard to say. They love their livelihood, so it'll take some persuasion. Yeah. Then you'll do the talking hunter, right? Sure. Great. There are halflings living there. Yeah. And we could definitely expect them to uh, have our back. The north harbor of Camp Thran is harder to take because there are more soldiers there. And you told me that they are expecting more soldiers any day now. Yeah, exactly. And I also think it's this, it would be smarter to start in the south since we were just in the north, so they're kind of on edge already. Yeah. yeah. So like definitely spread out our attack so they don't know where we will strike next. Yeah, take the south. If you burn down the harbors of Skyr, I hope the fishermen can find another way to fish using their smaller boats. Should we send a warning to the fishermen about what we're planning? Stay but the if they beach. tell the fishermen we're coming, then we rely on those fishermen being loyal to us. You're right. 
You could just go and burn the harbors in cover of night. But I wouldn't recommend it. It would not do us any good destroying the fishermen's livelihood. It is Vash we want to stop. And that probably won't do us any favor to burn down the fishermen's ships, because then no. they definitely will not be on our side. Yes, exactly. If we gave them, for example, let's say, one day, if we put in spies or something like that, they could talk to the fishermen and say, okay, don't move your boats by one day, or you will sorely regret it, your boat will probably be destroyed. Um, then they don't necessarily know it's us, but they will know that something has happened when we burn it down. Yeah. We give them an opportunity to, uh, to flee. We can also go see ourselves. I mean, <clears throat> it's not like they're looking for us. They don't know who we are. No, but if we um, if we don't give them a fair chance to prepare, yeah. it takes a while to move your boat. But 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 it is also just we need to burn the pier. We need to burn whatever military vessels would have to be there. We exactly. don't need to burn everything. No no no. I mean, but but it, how how do you how do you expect to control the fire? I don't. They're all on water. And also, like you but can burn a boat here. It doesn't necessarily burn a boat over here. Like no no no. But if you want to bear, burn the pier. Then yeah. it's gonna spread. There's a chance of that happening. But then I just would still prefer that we go there ourselves and talk to people. Okay. Compared sure. to sending whatever scouts we don't know. Uh, mm -hmm. But we know they're pr probably loyal to Bliss. But so we don't we know say. if they're persuasive. No, but they. My scouts are no diplomats. They observe and report. So let's just go ourselves then. Can I have uh, Can I have some time to prepare before we do that? Yeah, I mean... Are, are, are we in a rush? No, you may prepare. There is time. We've not gained the attention of the Empire yet, but we want to start to pick at his fence. Then we must be careful and act quickly. But I need to be... I probably need to be prepared because but I was how, how far expecting travel? to go to a cave right now. How far of a travel is it? You will travel for a week before reaching Skyr. Damn. Do we have some horses or something? Yes, you'll be given horses. And a wagon if you'll need it. Do we have an agreement then? Yeah. I think we stop there and then see. We can't plan everything. Uh, I'm generally a fan of not playing everything because it never works out anyway. So I think we should go there, see the lay of the land. Skyr is the first move for the Freeling Rebellion. Yeah, sounds fair. Good. This may give us a domino effect if we're lucky. Mm -hmm. When news of Skyr reaches Camp Thran or Morrowtown West, they may head to Skyr to check it out. That means Thran and Morotan will have fewer soldiers, if we're lucky. Yeah, but so it would probably be good if we have our little strike team and yeah. you, maybe you can find some other people. Like, so when we attack the harbor, you have another, some of your soldiers ready to take the fortress. Then when they move people to take the fortress, we have moved up to the other harbor and take that one out. So we all we keep moving. Yes, agreed. You know? Yeah. And uh, I agree. And st strike where they don't expect us. I'll see what I can do. I don't have many fighters here in Bliss, except the guardians who protect the inhabitants here. And I will not send them. Uh, but we are we are aiming to go stealthily, right? Yes. Stealth will be the best approach. So you don't draw unwanted attention. Yeah. Yeah, I would More assume story. assume uh, stealth would be needed Great. at some point. Do I need to fear that you are going to transform during this journey? That is... Could you uh, please go and do a thorough uh, self-inspection here? Yeah, uh, if I could, I would. I mean, I you're not know. like quite fully in control yet, so... I mean, there's always the risk. But then I have to hold you back, you know? We'll have to prepare for it. Yeah, I have, I have like, something... Like in, like we did no. last, like we did last time, like we did last time. Breaking case of emergency. <laughs> Are we going? So we're going during the night time as well, right? You prefer. I mean, you do it. to start with, we just go there. It's a yeah. week travel. We're just gonna go there. Okay. And I think initially we can enter the the town as just regular humans arriving. I mean, I can look like a regular human. Yeah, uh, of course. And you know that's that. We're just you know whatever traders. Uh, or whatever, and then we go in and we kind of get a feel for what's up. Okay. Talk to people at the tavern, see where the mood is, and then, <laughs> yeah, and then we uh, plan accordingly. 
Yeah. So when you leave, um, where, where are you going? Skyr. Yeah, so you go to the horses right away, you get on the horses right away and you yeah. leave right away. I mean, let's have some breakfast, I guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we go have, get something to eat first. Yeah, let's yeah. eat first. Yeah. 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 And pack some, whatever, some rations. And, and uh, yeah. So we're um, for the trip there. The and local I, people have a lot of food and rations there, so they gladly want to wanna give you uh, what you guys need. I mentioned earlier that Bliss is this safe haven. It is hidden in West Morrow in a titan forest. It is an old orcish camp, so there are outer walls surrounding the entire city of Bliss. Um, so people do not dare to approach this wall, fearing that it's inhabited by orcs. Now, this has been beneficial for the inhabitants of Bliss for a long time now. And of course, the reason why Tower Grim has been a little hesitant to help you is because he doesn't want attention. He doesn't want attention on Bliss. He didn't want people to know about it because ignorance of the Empire was beneficial for the people living there. Now, most of the people living in Bliss are halfling slaves and maybe some dragonborn refugees and just poor people. People who have been unfortunate in their lives. And... When the word of the rebellion has come to the people through Taugrim and through you guys, they surely want to help. Taugrim before has been trying to stop the slave issue politically in the different aspects, but it was very unsuccessful. So you can understand why it was such a dilemma for Taugrim to do this. He wanted to, but he feared the safety of the people of Bliss. Now, of course, the inhabitants want to help you. They want to help the Freeling Rebellion, and they want to help you, the heroes who provide it. So, they will provide rations for you for the trip. And they will provide um, travel as well. Like Taurogrim mentioned, horses or a wagon. Now, Kedal also is from here in West Morrow, so he knows that Inquisitors are in hiding here over in the West, have been seen here, and there have been sites where people have been slaughtered in a way that mostly always signified Inquisitors were here. They were wielding magic, and there was a sign with the rose in the eye, the weeping eye, uh, which is the sign of the Vildra Inquisition. Anyway, the meeting is over now, guys. Mm -hmm. Do you guys stick together? Yeah, we stick together? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we do. So the many hours of planning has come to an end. The heroes have come to a conclusion on what to do and how to proceed. But before they are to leave on a long trip to Skyr, the heroes want to rest, they want to eat and find a little peace of mind before they go. So you're sitting there, uh, Hunter, eating in the... Uh, let's forget this tavern in Bliss. And then you hear like a whisper. And it sounds like it's in your head. Okay. Um, I guess I get up and go outside. So you go just... Yeah, you know, just like get up slowly and... Do you say anything to uh, oh, Kettle like, or...? Uh, just like... Uh, just, uh, I'm gonna get some fresh air. I'm, I'm done eating, so... I'll, I'll see you at the horses later. Okay. Um, so when you come, you go outside, it feels like he's t this voice is telling you very specifically where to go. Over there, behind those trees. Yeah. I'll just, I follow the instructions for now. Okay. Then you hear the voice say, Hunter, I can grant you power to control this gift given you. 
I will make you an offer. Two tasks of three for me, and I will grant you control of your inner beast. Do as I say, and already now I will lay your curse asleep. And no more will you turn without your own choosing. You will become its own master. When the time is right, I shall call upon you. I know what you're trying to do. There is only one way to overrule his empire. Tear it to the ground. The first task I will ask of you will destroy his empire from within. Release a flood of destruction into the east by tearing down the wall to the barren lands of mid morrow And Vash's empire and all who live in it will be overrun and slaughtered. If you accept, I will give you the power to fulfill this task. It will be done, hidden away, so no one will know it was you. Accept and take my rings of power. At that moment there just appears a couple of rings in your hand. When the time is right, I shall call upon you. Then you shall go deep into the forest and put on the rings and leave the rest to me. You will wake up the day after and all will be done. And the voices just goes by. Are you still there? Can't hear anything? Hmm. And then a small whisper comes back. Do you accept? Well, not until you answer me, answer some questions. And you fear, you feel like the present comes back over you, like a cold shiver on your shoulder. So who are you? I am, I am the power, power that defines you. I, are you my real father? You carry my horn and, and my blood flows through your veins. Yes, yes, you are my offspring. But I don't understand. You're supposed to be dead. Foolishness to think such a thing. My body was taken from me, yes. But I cling to your bow and grow stronger every passing month. And I am almost whole again. Why should I believe anything you say? Believe what you want, boy. You are my ear. And the lust for power you carry. Only I can fulfill. But why should I believe you? You betrayed me. You killed my mom. You... Everything you ever done has been... evil and... lies. They will make you weak! You can never have ultimate power if you allow yourself to be slowed down by others. And let's say I release all this, these bad things and we defeat Vash. What happens to those bad things afterwards? <laughs> it does not matter. You have taken down an empire on your own. Let them own Let them the, own east, the after. east after. Much good will come out of this little evil. You will end the tyranny of Bash. Help the dwarves to win a war. And think of the half -lings. They will be free. What happened to my adopted father? Accept my offer. Then I will tell you of him. I can't. You weak fool! I, I will not become what you are. You will regret this defiance! And you feel that presence vanish away from you again. The cold shiver goes away, and you hear the birds back in the forest, and what was completely silent before just becomes normal nature. Okay. I, um, I think I sit down and like, you know, just try and like gather my thoughts a bit.
So Hunter sits there reflecting on the conversation he just had with his Patreon. What am I to do? And then a thought comes to his mind about the situation. And uh, I think I would like to find Taugrim. Mm -hmm. Taugrim is in his, uh, still in his tent, looking over the map and uh, thinking about the plans you've been talking and and he has his back to you when you come inside. What do you do? I like just knock. Yeah, uh, Taugrim. Hunter, come in. I have a, a request. Um, as we've talked about, probably is I, I got this curse. Yeah. And I think I come to the decision that I wanna try and get rid of it. You want it removed to be cured. Okay. I want to be cured. Uh, so, do you? Is there anybody here who has the power to clean of this curse, or do you have a way? Do you know of a way that I could do it? Not here in Bliss. I'm sorry, but in the swamp Istris, there's a wizard living in exile there. He has great power and may be able to help. Okay. I can send for him. Yes, I would like that. Cause but I'm afraid I won't, won't get to control this. May I ask what changed? Uh, yeah, I can't. I can't tell you uh, right now. But um, I just. I think it would be. Yeah, it would probably be the best if I get get it rid get rid of it. I agree, and I'm glad you've reached this decision. It's an unstable power, yeah, and I don't want to end up hurting any of my companions. I respect your decision. And agree. I'll send for him right away. I can't promise when he'll arrive. He can be rather odd. But I'll say it's urgent. But no, that's, that's fair. I'll try and keep it at bay, yes. Okay. Until then. That's fine, Hunter. And he goes back, put on, put on his glasses and try to look at the papers on the table. Was there anything else I can do for you? No, that, that's it. Thank you. You're welcome. Where do you go then? I'll go to the horses and start like packing up. Okay. So we have reached the end of Nordic D&D, the Ariana Saga episode 4. Our heroes have started a rebellion against King Vash's empire to free halfling slaves. Next time we're going to follow our friends going to Skyr. Thanks for stopping by. Oh yeah, and one more thing. If you like cool sound effects like this. Then go to our homepage at nordicdnd.podbean.com or our YouTube channel, where you'll find a link that'll take you to battlebars.com and you'll get a discount on subscriptions. Oh yeah, and remember guys, if you like the show, remember to like, subscribe, and leave a comment. See you soon.